guys. Welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean. We are on episode JL134. That's our 134th episode. This is year number four now that we're starting. For some reason, I thought it was three. No, no, we've, we've done it for three years. Year number four, and this is our 134th episode. So if there's in things that you're interested in, you're new to the show, at the top of this show, whether on YouTube or on Facebook Live, there is kind of a description. In that description, there's also uh, links to two of our documents. One has all of our shows in the order of which they have been aired, so chronologically, and the other one is by subject matter. So if there's specific things that you're looking to watch, uh, to learn about that you haven't seen yet, that may be your best bet. But either way, those are a free resource to you guys to be able to either kind of maybe prep for a show like this, watch some other episodes about like oil, say you're an acrylic painter who's been interested in oil, you can go back, look at a bunch of the oil episodes um, and what we've talked about there in preparation for upcoming episodes that might be about oil. So uh, again, free resource for you. Uh, today we're doing an oil painting study. Uh, we said that at the beginning of this year, my New Year's resolution was to do more immediate art. That means, you know, I might only have an hour. I might only have an hour and a half. I might only have 40 minutes. I don't just kind of wander around the studio looking for something to do. By the time I get some supplies out, suddenly it's down to 15 minutes. And then we all know we, we then don't do anything at all. So this is about having supplies on hand, kind of ready to go at a moment's notice. Um, having just something you grab, like Katie gave me high heel shoes today for her, for this episode, for our immediate painting subject matter. Uh, so that's what we'll be painting today. So it's not been planned. It's not even drawn out. We got a blank canvas we're going to work with. Um, we are going to be using the Lucas 1862 Finest Oils 19 piece hardwood deluxe box set. It's got this little easel box. It's got a wood palette that comes with it. It's got a bunch of paint, uh, brush cleaner, uh, oil, linseed oil. It does come with two brushes. We've used those in the past, as with most sets like that, where there's just a couple brushes. They're kind of like your freebie. They're usually not like the greatest brushes in the world. So I put in with it instead some of our new Munich bristle br blend. Blah, I knew I was going to Bristle Blend Brushes. They are a synthetic uh, filament and a natural hog bristle, so they keep their shape really nice, great retention. Um, they're also flagged, so they're going to lay the paint down. You'll be able to see kind of how those work here. Uh, they're a favorite brush of mine. There's also a palette knife that this comes with, so and uh, in a canvas. So you have all of that just in this set. I've only added the Munich brushes, and I added a three-pack of 9 by 12 uh, panels, but we decided to use the actual um, canvas that was in the box because it was bigger and it'd be a little bit easier for you guys to see. So uh, so that is the set that we're going to be using today. Before we get started, the self-portrait contest, the eighth annual, it's, I can't believe it's been eight years, Isn't that crazy? for 2020 is now online. We are taking entries now through April 12th. So that means at any time, and it's called a self-portrait contest. What does that mean? It's obviously a portrait. There should probably be a person. I mean, it could be somewhat abstract, but still needs to be you. A, por a person and you, or your, I guess, artistic rendition of you. Like, um, but I, and we have people that submit some odd things. So, um, so anyway, that's what that needs to be. There's five thousand dollars in prizes to be had for this. Um, the winner will be announced June 12th. If you're not sure kind of how to get to that, how you find out the directions, the rules, you're going to go to www.jerrysartorama.com and you're going to put the keyword in the search box, self-portrait. Then hit enter. That will bring you to the page. It'll explain all the good stuff. There's always, or the last couple years, we've done 30 popular vote finalists, so you can get your friends to vote for your artwork to try to get it in that top 30. Um, then there's 30 that are jury chosen. And then those 60 finalists are put together and then it's taken to a jury of professional artists to select the winners from there. 
So to find out more about that again, go to our website, jerryzardorama.com, type in keyword self-portrait, and that will give you all the cool information. Again, it needs to be entered by April 12th. Anything else that I missed with that, Okay. So it's no. good, good to go. I expect to see some Jerry viewers entering the contest. Okay. So let's, uh, I guess, let's go ahead and get started because we've got an hour to try to do an oil painting. So, um, so we're going to be doing her high heels. They're velvet. This is not something where texture like this is going to be obviously easily had in a very short demonstration. This is something where if you were doing something like this and you really wanted to give it kind of that more fabric velvet look, you'd be spending more time on it. But study means that it's just something where you're putting down a quick impression of it, okay? As I work, we're gonna talk about why I've made the choices I have as far as where I'm locating the subject matter. And then we'll talk about color, because you guys, if you've been with us, have had our composition classes from last year, you've had the color theory classes from last year. Now this subject matter could potentially dictate doing something in specific colors to give a feel. Do we want to make this sad? Do we want to make this happy? Do we want to make this a little like, hey, there's there's these high heels left over here just kind of thrown on the ground. Why, why is that? You can use color to give those impressions, right? So why don't you guys think about some color themes that you think might work well with this and let the girls know. We've got um, Amanda over there in Facebook land and then Frida on YouTube, our moderators. So uh, you can give them some suggestions. Now the colors I'm using, I'm gonna say this once and people always jump in. What colors are they using? What are they using? It's Lucas, the, the um, 1862 professional oils. Okay, the colors are, <laughs> Reading glasses, please. The colors are alizarin crimson, the deep vermilion, yellow ochre, permanent yellow light, chromium oxide. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the German. It's Verdian, but they say chromium gundren. Yeah. Uh, cobalt blue hue, Prussian blue, burnt sienna, ivory black, and an opaque white, which is probably titanium and zinc mix. Let's see. No. EW5. All right. So I've got a little bit of the linseed oil in here. If I do need to thin the paste just a little bit, I don't anticipate that because we're doing direct painting. We don't want to take our thinner, thin it way down, right? Because you put that on there, it's wet and slippery and going to slide. It takes a while for that to dry. This is done in an hour, right? We can't use that because that won't, we won't be able to layer on top of that. Unless, I mean, we could use it and wipe it off. So I might use it to thin the paste just enough to make it brushable, but I'm not going to be putting any washes on with that. Okay. So anybody talks, talked amongst themselves and thought about a, a color theme at all for this? Ladies, they have headphones on. They might not be able to, <laughs> to hear. All right. Well, while, while they're chit chatting, let me get the these brushes I didn't get all the sizing out of that I want to use. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to start drawing so they can jump in anytime with any questions or um, if there's specifically like people there, because there's a color theme I got in mind, but if, if people want to jump in and pick something, that'd be cool too. Okay. This is the one part I'm going to do a little bit thin and you know what? This is not brushes probably yeah we're gonna go with it okay all right so with this all I'm trying to do is get in the kind of the lines for my drawing okay this doesn't have to be and you know we could do this in graphite but we really don't have the time and I think with graphite people tend to get start getting really nitpicky and trying to then make a very permanent drawing we don't we don't want to do that we don't have time so we're just kind of ghosting in a little bit of color here we will put have your paint over this later so don't don't be afraid that oh no this is you know how however will we fix this we'll we'll be able to fix it now with shoes like this pay close attention to kind of the cut and i apologize you guys are not going to see the same angle that I see. So that's going to be a little bit 
kind of trying free to making the question sound, the question sigh, before she asks. Dude, this is weird because I've got, this is like one angle and then another angle for my reading glasses for <laughs> the depth. This is going to be fun. Okay, that's the angle for that. And this doesn't have to be perfect. We can tweak this on the fly. Okay, so don't, don't, as long as you're not putting something down thick, we're, we're good with kind of where this is gonna go. We've got this kind of safe. This is something I was doing at home. I would definitely use a light to make this a little bit more dramatic because of the studio lights to make it easy for you guys to see. Just the set and me and what we're doing, we've got multiple light sources. So we're, we're not worrying about that for today. We're just gonna kind of scrub in what we've got here. Do we have any questions yet, guys? It's so quiet, it's a little eerie. Okay, some foreshortening. We've had some of our drawing lessons. We've talked about foreshortening. I may have missed it um, while I was trying to write down all the colors, but what size brush are you using? Um, it is a Filbert size 4 of the Munich. Wanted to be able to answer that question about the colors later, huh, Frida? <laughs> Now that we've kind of got this roughed in, we are going to go ahead and start applying the paint. Has anybody thought of any ideas for the color? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? No? Someone said blue and crimson. Blue and crimson. Okay, so that might work. You would really have to have multiple kind of blues and colors to work with, but you're giving two different Unless you're making them both really deep, like like a wine and a really deep, like a velvety blue, where those kind of go together in that fashion, you're sending two different messages with color. You're sending a cool color message with that blue. You're sending a hot message with the this crimson, right? So, wh what do you do? What do you do with that? Where do you go with that? You would need kind of with a still life to me. Well, at least for a study, you're giving a lot more information. Something like this would be fun to do, to take it and say, okay, I'm going to do um, variations of three. So I'm going to do one that's cool tones. So it's like maybe the relief of getting home and getting these heels off, right? So it's, it's cool colors, it's relaxed, it's kind of that evening, you get home, you have a glass of wine kind of thing. Um, you could tweak those colors to make them more kind of violety blues. So it's a little kind of, you know, the warmer mystique of the evening, or you could make them cool blues like it's depressing. I thought I was going to go out and I'm not. So now my shoes are, used, you know, they're cast to the side. Um, you could do pinks to make it, you know, kind of like being the big girl, kind of that innocence or the first wearing of the, the fancy shoes. Or you could go with, with red to make it, super hot and electric, right? Make it very sexy and fun. If you're doing a crimson, which is a really bright color, and then you're doing a blue with it, that's kind of mixed messages. So that's the only thing that, that I would say is, is then you're gonna need to worry about the temperature of each of those colors combined together. You're gonna need to worry about the values. Are they gonna be super dark and kind of, you know, very sultry? Or are they going to be super bright and electric? How are those going to work together? So, um, so that's, I, I guess what I would say about that. This is going to be really weird with these glasses on. Okay. Uh, any other, was that it? So the only red. Oh, I thought you meant questions about our color no. suggestions. Yeah. We got red, we got blue suede. 
We got grays. Somebody said make Louboutins. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Red, red bottoms. Red bottoms. Okay, so I, my money goes on paintbrushes, not on. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Well, okay. So, so red. Some people said red, and I think the shoes won't be red, but let's pump up the background with that. Okay. Uh, remember how we said red and black together in the color theory class are like power colors together, right? Does anybody remember? Bueller, Bueller. Okay. Um, so let's let's work with that. Let's get a bigger brush. This is the other thing when you're doing studies. Because now we're we're 15 minutes in, so you're going to need to work pretty quickly. So even if you're not comfortable using a bigger brush, it's okay to break that out for some of your um, your work. I'm gonna just I'm thinning this to kind of see what I'm working with here because I want this to be brushable. Now this is the alizarin. I'm gonna keep the shoes black because I like them that way. But we can put some other things kind of in there. And I'm going to uh, make my background red. I may have to put more paint out because I think I would like this to be, have some thickness to it. And remember how we've talked with different lessons about you look at the item that you're doing, what percentage of time? Does anybody remember? Not a lot. You, at the item that you're working on, you look at that more or you look at the, your actual... Uh... Painting? Yes. Tina must not be on. Just I don't know. It just got to where we're in the Oh, okay, okay. Uh, you're going to, uh, it's better to be looking at your subject matter like at least 70% of the time, okay? Because otherwise you're painting what you think you know, not what you see, which is what you really know, right? So you want to actually be focused on, as I'm doing this, I'm looking back and forth from the shoes. I don't like the transparent streakiness. So right now, what this is doing is just putting a nice thin coat of color on and pushing it into this is this is called scrubbing it can be a little bit rough sometimes on some brushes these actually hold up super well for it so that's why i feel comfortable doing this And with this, I'm going to tweak this drawing a little because I, I, I brought it up a little too close and didn't leave enough point to the shoe. Okay. I'll try this without this. I'm just going to make weird squinty face, so everybody's going to have to can enjoy laughing at that and get over it. Are there any questions so far with what we're doing? Ladies, right now we're just trying to get some color on here. I can go back and actually lay color over this pretty easily. Can um, you remind us what's in the silicone jar? It's, it's just a little bit of Gamsol, just to thin my color just enough to make it a little, like, just so it's not getting up in my bristles with really thick paint, right? I'm not using it to make a wash at all. I just have wet the brush, and then I'm dipping it and blotted the excess out, and then I'm dipping it in the paint to work with the paint straight from the tube, okay? Because with this type of immediate painting, again, we do not want to thin this down, because the thinner you make this, the more you're going to have... Um, issues with being able to layer. Okay. Okay, so now with this, with this red behind it, do we wanna keep this kind of really deep red? How does everybody feel about that? Or do we want to come back more with kind of this uh, brighter vermilion that's the really, really 
kind of almost scarlety orange red. I know there's the delay, so we'll, I'll, I'll keep going and people can kind of catch up. Um, all right, I'm gonna leave the foreground as it is right now. Let's start kind of working on the inside of the, now I may come back to this and get this out and put this back in paint, but I want this available just in case. So that was the eight filbert, because in case anybody asks, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to work with, there's a six and a four. Uh, I'm going to work with those and probably this number four bright as well. Okay. All right. So with, with this next part, I just dip that in a little bit of linseed oil and then I've blotted it out. Okay. So our linseed oils are drying oil. I need more of this. I don't, I'm not big on using black, but again, this would be a nice power statement to have some more saturated black in here. I'm going to use this with a little of this red and start working in some of these kind of mid-tone areas inside the shoe here. Wanda asks, as a lefty, does it matter what portion of the canvas you start with? Uh, this is, not, since we're not, since this is easel work, Wanda, it doesn't, it's not like uh, doing calligraphy or something where you're at a table and your hand's going to be dragging through something that's a flat surface. You're not going to smear. No, you're smear. not, you're not, you're not going to smear. You're not going to, um, you shouldn't have problems with that. So, so it's, it's just wherever you kind of want to start. It's, it's irrelevant and it's really good to I like to put in a background first just to kind of judge where especially like this where I'm going quickly where I can see kind of outline my items decently um, and then kind of work from there All right. see that value is really close to that red so we're gonna have to come back in and add a little bit more black to it Kind of draw that sole on so I've got that on there. Okay, a little excess in that brush, okay. All right. Cutting back over that over that background just that little bit. I've not made that quite round enough for the foreshortening of it. Just fire away if you have other questions. Let's get away some. We'll come back in with the shadows in just a little bit. I'm seeing kind of the inside of that arch right there of the back of that heel, so I want to make sure I've got that kind of in where I can then add that. This part actually comes up a little bit higher even than I've made it. So I'm just turn, taking that brush and turning it on its side to do that drawing. Just with that edge, these keep a really nice super tight edge. And just remember, at any given point, if I don't like something, I can take a rag and wipe it out. I can take 
the palette knife and scrape it out, scrape it back, because this isn't something where we're working days on end on it. We're, we're actually doing it here pretty immediately, so it's going to stay wet enough to be able to remove. Now, the alizarin might stain it a little, the black might stain it a little, but that's perfectly fine. Okay, I'm working on the inside here of this heel. Now, because we're talking about this being an immediate painting, obviously we don't have a ground down. That's why it's white. If you work in specific colors and you enjoy specific colors as a ground, have some pre-done sitting, just sitting around your studio in sizes that you like to work in, or maybe some quirky sizes you've wanted to give a try, because then when you have time to go in and paint for a little while, you already have those ready to go you don't have to worry about trying to prime something and then either wait for it to dry or hope it's not slipping and sliding all around as you work. It's, it's already, you know, there and available for you to grab. It won't slow you down. this. I did not account as much for how the angle of this comes up at, so I'm re redrawing kind of the tip of this. Everybody half asleep, like I feel too. Yeah, no. They're learning. Okay. Well, feel free to jump in with comments. It starts feeling like crickets up here. All right. Just because you can't see all the yes. type going. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to draw that in with the red there. Okay. So see how we can really see our subject matter pretty easily right there? All right, so this is when we're gonna go in and start making some decisions about the bottom. And, and normally I would have this lit and either in like a little, like a little square corner box just so it's kind of gives a shadow, it gives some shade, and then you can kind of make your decisions easier based on that as to where the background color and then the forefront color line. So we'll probably come up into this a little bit with some color. Hold on, I need a sip of coffee. I apparently have not had as much coffee as Katie, who's dancing. I right. keep myself awake. Yeah. All right, so let's figure out a few things about shadow. Now, we've got the red, we've got the black, we can incorporate some maybe of the burnt Sienna in here that'll kind of, again, picking up some oil, blotting it back out just to keep that brush kind of lubricated. I'm going to bring this over into the black. And then I'm going to give it just a touch of white. Because I want it to be, I'm going to give it a little bit of red too. I want it to be a darker value, but I don't want it to be too brown and I don't want it to be too red. So right now I'm just looking to see how I kind of like this on here. See, it's kind of a nice, see how I just smooth that edge out that where I'd had the drawing wrong. Just by using that, that kind of helps me pick that up into my shadow. When you're doing a painting study, what size brush do you normally use to start with to do your light sketch of the subject before you actually start putting down blocks of color? If I was at home, I would probably use a, a filbert that was a, between a two and a four. 
I didn't have one that was between a two and a four, so I used the, um, oh no, it is a size four filbert. That still, I probably would go with something smaller, probably a two. Um, but because it's, because these keep such a nice shape, when they're turned on their side, it's not about the like fine point. You can get a really nice, I mean, you saw the lines that were on there. It worked really nicely. Everybody's different. The problem is most people want to use a brush that's way too small for what they're doing. The underdrawing, there's a little bit more to forgive as far as you can use something that's smaller, but you want to then switch back to something bigger for putting on larger areas of color. When you do your highlights, do you plan on leaving the canvas white until you get to that point, or would you go back in afterwards? Uh, I would probably go back in afterwards because I would never do a white, a straight up white. for Unless it's like glass reflection or something like that, I wouldn't do a straight up white for a highlight. So I wouldn't leave the canvas to go back. And, and if, if this is me and I'm doing this at home, I'm doing it on a toned ground but we didn't have time, we don't have time to show that in an hour. So, so I definitely would not have white left to be playing with, you know? Okay. All right. So I need to make some quicker decisions about kind of how we're going to work with this. Um, I kind of like that reddish that we're, we've taken the alizarin and gotten kind of that nice reddish black out of that. But we need super dark for some of our areas like in here. So we come back in here and find that super dark with this one. I just picked up a bunch of white. With this one, I'm using that bright that's a number four because I can draw on the side room ice, but I want to make it a little thicker in here. So I'm picking it up. Jill wonders if you prefer painting on uh, on a stretched canvas or on a flat canvas board. Uh, I. Depends on the day. Huh? Depends on the day. That's what I would it, it depends on which way the wind is blowing. Really. Right, <laughs> for, for for whether What's I in the studio? prefer. Um, I, I I probably ultimately if it was like one of those where you could say, somebody said you can have. One unending painting surface your whole life that we will supply you with, but it can only be one. What you know? Do you want stretch canvas? Do you want this? Do you want that? What would it be? I I probably would say I would want a thin canvas panel, like a the really little one quarter inch, and it wouldn't be canvas; it'd be linen. I would want that because I I like the linen surface, but I like the board just because it's easier to do more things and less storage. So. That's, that would probably be my preference. But again, I, Amy will paint on anything. It seems like it anyway, right? Okay. So that's a highlight. So let's, um, when would be a time that you would specifically do immediate art? Would it be to practice for setting up composition for painting you want to do? Would it be to warm up? Good question. When do you want to do immediate art? Okay, the, there are a multitude of times. Number one, working on your speed. Nothing is, is better. We, we had to do this in a college class, and I hated it the first couple classes that we did it. And then by the end of sem the semester, absolutely loved it. It made you work on, on painting speed and not, not overthinking everything, making quick decisions, working very fast. We had a timer and you could hear it. It was like a metronome. It was horrible. And um, you would have to, you know, keep up. And when they said done, you were done. So um, that is, it helps doing that. It helps to uh, do some color studies, some compositional studies. It, it, it's, it's useful at pretty much any time. So um, even just, you know, we, like we were filming a proprietary panel in here the other day. Um, the Da Vinci 
what was that, the dual-sided panels, Katie? Mm -hmm. And I thought, God, these are perfect for studies because you could you could do multiple ones to work on things and then have you know multiple pieces of art where you don't have to buy a whole bunch of surfaces. Um, that was like the coolest thing about it was just that ability to because because there's a lot of people and I, and I'm sure there are people that are in, you know on the thing and, and thinking well but I don't I can't do that I can't afford a bunch of stuff to just do studies I can only afford stuff for finished art you can afford to invest in yourself as an artist and to give yourself more practice and some forgiveness and you know your learning curve is far better when you're not being constantly worried about you know about that waste aspect of it. So it's it's a good thing to, to have to do. Now that doesn't mean you can't do it, you know, financially wisely and make make the most of your money to make it count. So I mean Picasso and people like that took cardboard and just did it and for practice stuff. And then, you know, what happened it, it turns up in museums. So I'm not suggesting you you go that route, but if it's really that big of a financial pinch, something that you could do a study on one side and then a finished artwork on the other. Yeah. Just for record, we don't recommend painting on gesso cardboard. No, no, I'm, I, it's not archival at, at all. Um, but I'm, I'm just saying that if that, if that makes you practice, mm -hmm. it's but they're smarter. If you don't intend for it to be archival and it's to throw away, then right, that's one thing. But 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 I mean, who knows? And that's why something like that Da Vinci mm -hmm. struck me as this is brilliant because. This gives you, you know, the ability to, what if it does turn out nice? What if somebody wants to buy it? You know, you can do, uh, uh, get two works in one in a study. Right now I'm taking some of this alizarin and just adding it in there. This just, I like how dark this looks. We can come back and add some, some little bit lighter parts later. I'll put a touch of white. Right now, even though you can't see the the kind of folds in the space here in the shoe, I'm trying to kind of ghost it in with little color variances so that it'll be easier to read that form. Okay. Did I answer that question, Frida? Sometimes when I'm painting, I start drifting off and think that I've answered it, and then, then I really haven't, and then I'm like, yay, I'm painting, and then I'm like, oh, I didn't. Okay. When you're painting in your studio, do yes. you prefer silence or mu music or talking or podcasts? Um, I I cannot listen to pod. I mean, I could listen to podcasts, but I would... It's, you had to quiz me on it for when my life depended on it later that would be a big okay well just shoot me now <laughs> because um because i can't music um i will go through cycles of where i have specific albums that i listen to because they get to become white noise after a while so that i can either sing along with it or i just you know i can it, it gives me a, a a kind of subconscious time like okay, I'm about this far into this. I need to pick up the pace or I need to, you know, I've got, oh, look at all this time I've got. I can slow down on this if I'm really enjoying this or, you know, or whatever. Um, and then um, I have a cockatoo in my studio now and and it's fun to listen to her. So I, where I would normally listen to headphones, she loves music and she will sing, which is entertaining. So I keep... The music just on and then listen to her. Rah, 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 rah. Yeah, Patty said, I'll bet she's used to barking dogs and talking birds. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, I'm just edging that just to find some definition. Can you guys see it on your monitor? Mm -hmm. Okay, yep, my monitors have got really nice darks, but I'm not seeing the that color kind of variance. A little bit. 
It's making like almost like a nice kind of violet that's pretty, but still kind of reads as a lightened black. And if you're somebody that can listen to a podcast and remember it with working, kudos to you. All my friends talk about audiobooks, and I cannot. I'm so picky about who's reading that I usually can't get past their voice. Oh, it's not even that. It's just that it like it finds this back train in my brain, and I absorb none of it. <laughs> yeah, I would need to be driving in the car to do that. I don't even know do if that. in the car. All right, can you guys see the kind of definition of the shadow and shape there? We'll kind of bring that back out in a minute and make some lights a little lighter. But right now this is a nice kind of grade. Grade alizarin that I really like. Have you ever tried doing an oil color chart in a sketchbook? Um, that would be something I would advise not to. I would I would use a, uh, a the question was, um, have you tried doing an oil painting color chart in a sketchbook? Uh, you would need to gesso it, number one. It's still not, it's paper that's not designed to necessarily be like long-term art, like a canvas or something. And if this is something where you're wanting to keep this as a working color chart through time you really it'd be better to do like a canvas pad where you could kind of maybe put punch holes in it and leaf through it when you want to look at it instead of um, in a sketchbook plus it would be in there and take a while to dry so then you've got that what do you do with it where do you store it you know I, I, I would always especially if you're if you know you paint on canvas exclusively all the time paint refracts light a little bit differently, like especially if you use a really heavy textured canvas, then it's going to on an absorbent, really super absorbent surface like paper. I mean, it's not to say you can't, it's, you know, if that's all you've got and you've got a, you know, an excessive sketchbook paper and you want to use it for that, there's, there's no rules that say you, that you can't. It's just, I would think it would make it difficult to access easily when you're when you're trying to work okay that's a little big for putting that on there how do you decide when to tackle a different area of the painting like you're skipping around some so that they're wondering like at which point are you like, okay, next? Um, I'm trying to, okay, so I have a laundry list of things that I'm going through in my head when I'm painting. Um, the, the question was how to kind of, how do, am I deciding, making the decisions for where to go and where to somehow pick up yellow and, and things like that while, while I'm working. Um, I, I was one of those people who'd be over here painting on this little section and everybody else in class would almost have a finished painting and like this much would be actually really high detail complete because it, I, uh, my name is Amy and I have OCD and it's very bad. And especially where, when it comes to um, kind of the control of wanting to feel like I, I'm, I'm making progress and headway, okay, on art. Um, a teacher a long time ago broke my spirit as the joke that in making me very consciously paint all over okay so like it's okay to pick a spot to work like the shadows but then you have to pick another large spot so that's why i started with the background because that gives me like gratification as an artist and an ocd person and that look there's a big area that's all blocked out not that i won't still have to go back to that but that's Kind of, and it helps to keep painting all over because you start feeling like, okay, I'm making progress. Uh, I don't want to slow down, especially when you're working fast like this. If you're working fast, 
trying to work fast and you're still just in this little section. Like, because if, if the professor said time and this was a 20 minute time thing, I would have had nothing done if I wasn't at least kind of trying to work all over it. So, so I'm just going, okay, this area is kind of complete. Now I need to switch to this. Now I need to switch to this. Joe would like to know, do you ever use purely synthetic brushes for oil? And if so, in what case? Um, I, I really like hog because it's stiff. There are some brushes that are synthetic that are stiff, but it, it's, I really like the feel of hog. I love these because it gives a little bit more, you know, durability of a, of a kind of harder, stiffer synthetic. So with my, propensity to scrub. I mean, this thing's in great shape still from, let me put it where it's not. Can you guys see that? That still has a really nice shape to it. It hasn't eaten up the head. If you turn it, it's not worn on this side or this side. A regular hog bristle brush, for the most part with some brands, I would have already scrubbed an angle on my brush. So this, this synthetic, where it's partial synthetic, gives it some good durability as far as if you're rougher on brushes, but it still gives you kind of that stiffness in the play of the natural hog bristle. Now where, where a synthetic brush, Joe, is really going to be fantastic for doing oils is if you're using water mixable oils because that's going to give you the ability to clean that out really easily since you're not using a solvent based, uh, you know, a paint that, that cleans with solvent. It's a lot harder to get that um, water soluble oil out of the brush without like really having to scrub with soap and water and you know you, you get that residue in it when you're just using water in a um, container so that's where a full synthetic um, would be ideal it's just you know and, and some even with even with instructors sometimes what you what you love is what you know um, so that plays I'm sure a part in my love of just a, a traditional hog, you know, it, it really takes me actually trying something new before I kind of convert to, you know, over to it, if that makes sense. If he has a follow-up question on that, just, just hit me up. I'm not sure if that really, some questions are hard to paint and work at the same time or, or paint and talk at the same time because it's, I have to really think about it. I'm going to come back in that in just a minute with more highlights because I've got some really big highlights that you guys can't see in this shoe. But I, I right now, how are we doing time wise? Yeah, right now we're yeah. starting to come up on it, so Wild we need minutes. to we need to actually be getting a little further. Now, kind of the fun thing of this is this. Um, because this black is kind of a cool black, it's made almost a, a violet with the uh, alizarin and the um, and that black when we were just talking about doing this as red. So I'm kind of incorporating a little bit of some ochre in it to give kind of a grayed yellow for kind of a little bit of contrast. So I like that. Maybe what I would do from there would be tone down our background red so it's not quite so red or even make it a little bit more violety and do it as more of a, of a kind of a complementary based color scheme with the violet and the yellow. Um, let's see, I can't see anything inside of that one. So I'm going to do this. there. Get a, let's see, that's got a good edge. Okay. All right, so now I got to figure out what we can get done in this time frame. I'm going to take this. You guys can't see it in the back. It's very dark and it's not really where it makes sense to 
leave it open like that. So I'm going to do that. some little brighter highlights on here. As an artist, always, this sounds the, like the dumbest thing in the world to say, always wipe your excess paint out before you stick your brush in your cleaner. I know that sounds crazy, but I noticed in my AOC class this year, a lot of people were just had the globs and were just sticking it in and going. Bruh, bruh, bruh. It's like ah. Waste in paint. I'm trying to teach my six-year-old not to do that. So. Uh, it's, it's just it's something that you you're trying to hurry and you don't think and, but it was it was very like. <laughs> Please don't don't give Amy a stroke. Not a big fan of rounds because it's hard to get with a unless they're uh, natural hair that's really soft. They're hard to get a good edge on. really dark. I hope everybody can see that pretty decently because it seems very dark to me on the camera. everyone what is in your tin cups uh the tin cup just has a little bit of linseed oil in it from the set just to wet the brush enough before i apply the paint so it makes it kind of not as it, it makes the paint film just slightly thinner by just dabbing some on you don't want it to be too too heavy and slick because it would make it so that it's um if you want to layer on top of it it doesn't want to stick or it'll slide around or kind of mix too easily um, and then in the other this is just a little bit of um, Gamsol you have to kind of do this very deliberately because it can pick up that little bit of black that's there and we all know when you paint up against black oil paint, how easy it is to pick it up and move it. Okay. Yeah, let's see, like that. Right there. Not sure how I want to finish that, so I'm going to kind of leave that for a minute. in there. Now I'm kind of pushing and patting that on there because I don't have a, this is a pretty large brush for detail, so I'm just pushing it up, kind of sliding it against where I want my stroke to start, and then pulling it up from there. Same thing here, but I'm going to pull it down to kind of go back into that other stroke. This is just for that kind of underside of that shoe over there. Got about five minutes. Okay. Any last questions, guys? I'll get this as far as I can, and then what we'll do from there is we'll um, 
I'll finish it and put it in the uh, Jerry's Live group, the last, the final pictures of it. Do you think you would seal or varnish this immediate painting? I mean, you could if I liked it and I wanted to do something with it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, as soon as it's dry to the touch, you could use something like Gamvar. If you wanted, you could put a retouch varnish on it. Um, you know, it's not super thick. And because it's linseed oil, it would, it would dry pretty quickly. Um, Joe is the one who asked earlier about the size of the brush for sketching and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And he just wanted to say thank you for showing how well that filbert held its shape. Oh yeah. Response to that. Oh yeah, because that's that's unusual. So that's a that's something that it's good to see. Okay, getting making this a little wetter. Now in here, I, this is not the prettiest pink. It's kind of. I, I would probably start adding in a little bit of the scarlet to make pump this up, because I want it to be pink in some of these areas, where the shadow is coming in but I don't like that kind of berry look that's kind of in some of the rest of this. So I'm gonna do that against there. Now for this, remember white dries super slow. I'm just really stumbling this across here to make it thin and that I can come back with some thicker kind of decisions because I'm going to want this to be a lighter value here. Um, I need to, to look at the value of this next to determine what is my lightest point in this painting because do I want to lighten this up some in the back? Do I want to um, darken some of the, the gray in here? to kind of work on that. What, what do I want to do to kind of make some decisions with how this is going to play out? And, and the stark whiteness of the canvas is kind of nice. So I'm bringing it away. But I don't think I would want it like solid, crazy white. So I've got that little bit of pink kind of stuck in my brush. Remember that white will pick up everything I drag it along. So I'm going to be super careful, even maybe not really touch the edge. Or if I touch the edge, I want there to be a pretty good load of paint on the side of it. Is it ever okay to leave white canvas? Um, I mean, you can. I don't like it. It's, it's like, it's like when people say, is a pastel work a painting or a drawing? Well, is it, does it have a bunch of space still left on the, on the surface, you know, of the paper? Well, then it's a drawing. Is it, a, is everything covered by something? It's a painting. That's why the nice thing, that's why people do a ground, right? Because then it's at least covered with something. Because just archivally, it's better to have that bond, especially since most primer is made out of acrylic. Just to have, because, because, okay, think of it this way. Your art gets put in MoMA or somewhere big. There's issues with it. They have to lift it off the canvas and put it on something else. They do that with paintings. If you didn't paint all the way across all of your canvas so that it's got a layer of oil paint, what are they going to do for that? You know, how are they going to... I mean, I'm sure there's new techniques, but that's still something that, that's been an issue in the past is how do you restore something that that you can't lift to glue to something else to repair, right? So. To me, it's distracting when you do that because then I, all I notice is the, the bare, bare, the yeah. bare painting yes. and not. It looks like you were in a time crunch and you're like, well, good enough. That's fine. Yeah, it's just so know. different than like the watercolor. Yeah, the here. texture, yes. yeah. Like where you have to leave the white. Yeah. Right, yes. Um. How do you decide whether or not to paint the sides of the canvas and how often do you personally finish the sides of your canvases? Unless I'm going to frame it in something like an illusions frame or just hang it on the wall with no frame, like if it's wrapped like this, the gallery wrapper, it goes around the back side, I will, then I will paint the sides. If I do a ground, I do the ground all the way around to the back. 
because if this ever needs to be restretched, depending on what size they're actually stretching this on, at least if you go all the way around, they have the ability to then stretch it on something that's got that same size, right? So, um, but not everybody likes that. It's just, it just to me, it looks, if somebody's gonna leave it as is, it looks really sloppy when it's just, um, the paint goes to the edge and it's kind of hanging off and then there's always some overpainting, right? Where it's messy and then some always doesn't get to the outside. At least go a little bit over the edge because then depending on what that frame kind of overlap is, you don't have white marks that show through. I've seen people's works where they've only paint kind of the edge and the, the white marks kind of show through because maybe the frame that they bought a little off um, on the overlap. So that's something to consider. But to me, it doesn't, it doesn't take that much time to do it. Now, okay, in saying that, and let's say you're on a deadline and, the, and you're doing an oil painting and it, it can be the gallery or, you know, whatever show that you're, you've got it in will allow you to have the gallery wrap um, and with it painted, you don't have to put it in a frame but you also need the artwork there in a, in a couple weeks and you're not going to use an alkyd medium or something like that. Black dries super duper slow. Like so slow. So pick a lighter drying color if you if in that case that's something that's already in your painting that you'll be able to put on uh, because that I, I, I have in, in a humid time when I didn't have air conditioning going in a summer I painted an outside edge black went to pick it up like three or four weeks later and my hands were completely black because it was the slowest drying black pigment that it could have been. So um, you can always finish it off in acrylic or paint it black acrylic before you start your painting so it's already done and you can just kind of touch up the edge and oils. So. Rhiannon would like to know, um, do you worry about paint being raised when it's heavier on the canvas, in other words, really thick layers on the canvas, does that cause any issues either with drying time or? Um, the thicker paint is, um, the, you know, obviously, especially if it's something like a white or a black or some, you know, something like that, the longer the dry time is gonna be, but um, when you've got different thicknesses in areas on your painting, what that does for you as a painter is it adds interest to your subject matter, right? So if, if it's thick in some places and thin in others, the brushwork is varied. To me, that adds so much more to a painting than it does if it's just all kind of thin in the same color. Um, that, that's, that's not ever gonna be a problem to do that. I think it's, go, 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 Think about that and decide kind of what your personal preferences are, but go to an art museum and actually look, get up uh, to like some of the impressionist paintings and things like that and look and see what those brush marks do. Um, look at uh, Singer Sargent and some other people like that. Look at the interest that varying uh, thicknesses and strokes add and, and, and kind of see what you think of it. Um, making stuff all too smooth, all the same, you know, your strokes all being the same way can start really adding to like a boredom factor. And Katie is signaling me that we're, we are done. Mm -hmm. So I will work on this and post it by Friday in the Facebook Live group. If you're not a member of our Facebook Live, um, go to Facebook groups. You unfortunately do have to have a Facebook account to be able to join groups. Um, you can always make one and just keep it private and don't post anything. Oh, you can lock and, it down so nobody yeah. can see anything and you don't right. have to post anything. Right. It's just basically the login. Right. So you can go to groups, search for Jerry's Live. It'll pop up. You have to answer the question to be able to be bumped through just to make sure it's not some auto bot trying to get in a group. Um, and then you will be in and we post stuff from the show sometimes we post reminders um there's all sorts of fun cool things from people that the yellow is what has happened <laughs> i feel a girl for me anyway it's a fun group to be in and there's yellow ochre for everyone it's on your shirt yeah. so yeah that's not a surprise this is the cleanest i get so 
All right, well, so hopefully that kind of helped you see how you can really work. I mean, we didn't start till it was already, what, 15 or 20 minutes in before we even started. So we probably could have gotten something done with that time kind of added back into this. At least you've seen how something can be blocked out really easily. Just continue working on a painting just to give yourself some painting practice to even practice just drawing with a brush. So you're not always sitting there doing a very detailed underdrawing that once you get paint on it, you don't see anyway. So, um, so that was the oil paint study show next week. We're doing immediate watercolor. So, and that's going to be, that's my control freak out factor. So you guys <laughs> will enjoy that. I will probably be biting my lips all the time. It should be interesting. So anyway, thanks for joining us. Don't forget the self portrait contest. Um, go to jerrysartorama.com keyword self portrait. It will give you all the dates and fun and the prizes galore and all those rules that come with it. So thanks for watching and we will see you next week. Take care.